Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mm, mm -hmm. Now, guys, I've got this mug here. Looks almost like a beer stein, and it comes from my friends in, from Colorado, Brad and Christine, who wrote to visit us, and they brought me this new cup, and it's just an amazing addition to the collection that we've already got, and thought I'd come out here and just share it with you. It's a really actually quite a neat one, to be sure. Mm. Well, guys, as promised, going to give you a little update on what we experienced at the Digital Fusion Summit last night. And boy, was this absolutely spectacular. They had some amazing speakers. They had Securitize there. Serranus was there. The one that really, you know, interested me a lot was Anchorage. Now, Anchorage was there talking about custody and, you know, having it insured. And in a way that you would think in a traditional aspect as to way that a lot of these securities are custodied now. And I was thinking, man alive, is this going to take off in this digital asset space? Because a lot of us, you know, big questions I get oftentimes have to do with custody. Now, of course, you know, people come out and say, hey, David, what do you recommend as, you know, the best hardware wallet? Because a lot of us are totally into self-custody because, of course, we know our exchanges, hey, exchanges have gone down, they have been hacked. And, you know, if you if the, if you the got it with an institutional grade custodian, but it's not insured, well, you feel pretty vulnerable there too. Now, Anchorage is talking about having it completely insured and everything else. And this is a major, major deal. So Judy and I, in fact, are probably going to be looking into that. And after talking to Jake Claver, it seems like somewhere closer to the end of the year, that's going to be available for a lot of the assets that most of us hold. XRP, XLM, Hedera, Hashgraph, you know, all, most of the ISOs and things like that. So really going to look into that. Now, uh, when it comes to hardware wallets, you know, I usually just kind of say, hey, look, it's all about preference in this way. Most hardware wallets, they function more or less the same, right? You get your seed phrase on and on and on. It's just how you interact with those. Like for Descent, it's different than it is for Ledger Nano X. Again, different for Trezor and all that kind of stuff. Now, those are the top three. And of course, now Tangem is picking up some big time speed. The thing with hardware wallets is most of them don't get hacked, guys. They get compromised and of course how do they get compromised well people fall for these phishing expeditions you know where someone sends you an email or you get a text oh my goodness you got to put in your seed phrase or your ledger's going to get you know you're not going to be able to access your funds and so people do and bam they get tagged right there right and so this is why we want to avoid that but guys what we were learning in this summit last night about the stuff that's coming on there are some major investment bankers there i was sitting right beside a guy that in Dallas here runs a hedge fund for, you know, these digital assets. And it is in a, a big, like millions and millions and their target is into the billions. Needless to say, we had a really great discussion. Guys, the innovation would blow your mind of what's coming for this digital asset space. And I know we're sitting there watching the day-to-day -day price action of these things. And we're thinking, man, is it ever going to move? I mean, I know that feeling. I've been there myself. But guys, this is why I was saying, if we just take time, out and look down the road at what's coming it is going to be phenomenal i genuinely believe it oftentimes i think about how you know in the last 20 30 40 years you know we've seen technological innovation right happen of course the advent of the internet social media how that changed just absolutely almost everything that we do in terms of like you know who how many people are walking around and do not have one of these smartphones most of us do and most of us are interacting you know on a you know with our applications and that and we're dealing internationally with that i mean it's transcending borders look at how that has changed the way the world literally works well guys i'm going to tell you something i believe that this digital asset space is going to swallow that whole and you just wait and see of how that change absolutely is, impacts the way the world works. And you think right now we're absolutely getting in at the app at the right at the very beginning, practically of all this man alive is that big. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. And guys, that's where I'm like looking down the road. Now, there's a lot of folks out there that believe we are going to see some massive, massive appreciation, of course, when regulatory clarity comes in. That was another big piece. We had some huge law offices in there talking about the regulatory environment of this space. 
and how that is literally moving at warp speed. And believe it or not, they're, they're thinking within the next 12 to 18 months, we could literally see a framework established in this country that could, you know, literally set the tone for the next 10 years. And when you think about that, guys, and you get that regulatory clarity, you are going to watch institutions that because of their fiduciary responsibility can't touch this space. Obviously, guys, they see what's coming. They are going to literally pile in. We're talking about, of course, you know, pension plans and all that kind of stuff. And when they do, hey, the risk is coming down. Now, when the risk comes down, what happens there? Well, the reward comes down. And you think about this for every person. Now, I've thrown this out before, but it's really something wise to think about. For every person, let's say, selling XRP at like 100 bucks, someone else is on the opposite side of that trade buying it at $100, aren't they? Now, what do you think is in the mind of the person buying it at $100? Well, they're thinking, hey, I'm thinking, I'm hoping it's going to go to 200, 300. And yet here we are buying it at what, 58 cents? Guys, I'm telling you what. Now, a lot of I got a lot of flack for putting out that article there or commenting on that article where someone was saying, hey, we could be in for a 9,400 and what, 67% something like that increase on xrp in the next run and people oh that's never gonna happen da, da, da. guys i was there to see it happen with other assets absolutely i was we were buying cardano when it was like three cents and it went to over three bucks that was a ten thousand percent move absolutely guys don't think that these things cannot happen. They have happened. Do we know for an absolute guarantee they will? Of course we don't. But look, even if it did a half of that, that is phenomenal. And this is where, like, I'm just amazed at the people that get in there and would waste their ever loving time going in there and just, and I think a lot of them don't even bother watching the videos, of course. They just base it off of a title. Talk about the proverbial judge in books by their covers. Wow, I'll tell you. Hmm. But needless to say, when you waste your ever-loving time getting on there, spending time, taking in and writing all these comments and things like that to fud it out and all, no, you wouldn't. Most wouldn't. And another thing, too. So a lot of people keep, come out there, and this is what they do. They throw this guy, uh, what's his name? Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Crypto Bellwether. Crypto Bellwether. That guy spends more time, you know, talking about what he hates about XRP than he does of what he believes in absolute and the thing is this guys a lot of people have actually interacted with this guy to kind of clue him in the things that he knows absolutely you listen to him you know he knows zero zero about it and he comes off to pretend to be like such an expert hasn't even invested this much time really to understand because if he did he would know for an absolute fact because he comes out and says oh wow no banks are really dealing oh really how about hsbc in england there one of the biggest banks in the country and absolutely partnered up with Ripple. SBI, you got Japan coming out and literally saying, hey, most banks in Japan are going to be dealing with, uh, you know, Ripple and XRP and all the non and, on. and the guy is totally off his rocker. I cannot wait until these things really do move. And when they do move, and I do believe they will move, guys, a lot of folks are not going to be on the train. They are going to miss it, miss it, miss it because they're believing all of this utter nonsense. But when you waste your time getting out there just to talk about something that you don't believe in, I mean, you got too much time in your hands if you ask me if you're doing that. Maybe they're all just bots. I don't know. But guys, when I look down the road at real world asset tokenization and what is coming for this space, it is mind bending, absolutely mind bending. And for that matter, a lot of them are working hand and glove together. We just saw a big time thing coming out with Hedera working with Ripple and all that and Aptos for the, you know, the micro regulations over there in the EU to help get this institutional investors fall into compliance with those regulations, right? That's a big deal right there too. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know the brother and sister combo between XLM and XRP. And of course, some of these guys, they want us to believe, oh, they're so diametrically opposed. Guys, they are not. They are working together to solve a lot of these solutions. You just wait and see of what's happening. They are absolutely doing it. 
Guys, we can see the future unfolding right before our very eyes. And you just think about that. And the, when we get this regulatory landscape coming out and literally within the next 12 to 18 months, why? Well, we know it's a big hot ticket in this selection cycle, don't we? Yeah, of course we do. We can see it all over the place. In fact, both candidates are out there saying, oh, how they support crypto. When it wasn't that long ago, they were both out there saying how it was absolutely nothing to touch and everything. Now they're all into it. Guys, we are getting to the point where we're going to have, you know, like a, I don't know how to, what is it called? A Cambrian explosion or something like that, where basically it's just all of a sudden, boom, it just starts to revolutionize the wide world. And I don't think it's going to take near as long as it had taken for the internet because the internet, what, it took 20, 25 years. And now we're like in full bore. Guys, I think this will take, what, three to five years. But within the next 18 months, we could see these things move that will transform lives. And this is where you want to be out there. And I'll tell you what, think about your future, thinking about not just the accumulation of that wealth, but how you preserve it. How do you employ it? How do you protect it? On and on and on and down the road and how legal structures form a part of that and this and that. And that's what these summits are all about. If you get the opportunity to go to some of these things, you should get out there and do it because you would be mind blown to realize how many high level and high net worth, high level, you know, organizations, Corporations, institutions, individuals are really, really, really getting into this space. You know, it's like they look at it like the new Wild West when they could go out there, you know, go west, young man, seek your fortune. That's what this digital asset space represents right now. But guys, I'll tell you what, didn't take too long for people to get out there and settle it, did they? Nope, didn't, not at all. Mm -hmm. Of course, you had the trailblazers, you know, that went out and absolutely did it. And that would be, I guess, tantamount to the developers and things like that. Then you had the pioneers, you know, the early adopters that went out and got in there. And then, of course, you had the settlers. And after the settlers came the merchants. And after the merchants came the institutions. And after the institutions and the industry came, everything, it was just done. It was, you know, and all the opportunity to really make it big. Well, then it was off the table, wasn't it? Of course, there are still some opportunities, but not like they were in the very beginning. And that's what I see this digital asset space represent do you know that this is probably one of the only asset classes where we as retail investors could front run institutions why because in most cases you got to be an accredited investor liquid net worth of at least one million dollars outside of your principal residence and then on top of that you know, or or you're making high high what you know six figure income multiple six figure income for a number of years and things like that or you know you've gone through the testing of the sec well guys that's what it was here, we're able to get into this space. Now, there's all this conjecture that maybe eventually in some of this regulation, they're going to require, you know, in, uh, you know, institutional accredited investors and stuff like that in order to get into it. And yet now here, you and I could get grandfathered in. Is that a big, big deal? And guys, I believe amazing, amazing things are coming. Now, it is Friday. And having said that, weekend's upon us. And guys, we're going to have a, a real special guest tomorrow coming in and talking at our Saturday question and answer. We're gonna come out here and we're gonna sit down together and we're gonna start and we're gonna answer some questions. I'm gonna interview him. We're gonna answer some questions and it's Versan Algera, Black Swan Capitalist is gonna be right here on this patio tomorrow morning when we're doing our question and answer. And I sure hope to see you there. And of course, Sunday, we're gonna have our sugar on Sunday where we come out and share some real nuggets of encouragement. Guys, amazing, amazing things are happening in this space. And I really encourage you, get out there. Get out and really try to understand it to the best of your ability. Don't miss out. That's what I would at least say. You owe it to yourself at least to get out and really research it. And I love you. I want you. Judy and I, I'm going to tell you right now, we want you guys to make it. Boy, do I ever want to see as many as possibly we can bring along with us. And we will have a testimony. Guys, they are going to write history books about the transformation that is this, this space and what's happening right now is going to represent. Because it should Jesus, Terry, I'm telling you what, it is going to be the story of legends. I genuinely believe it. So guys, I'll tell you what. Till later on today when we have a fabulous video for you. Have a great one and take care.